Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Thursday, February 18th, and from state and local vaccine updates to a look ahead at Mud Hens Baseball this spring, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. But first, we got even more snow today. Thankfully not as much as Monday and Tuesday, but it did pile on top of the more than a foot of snow that we already had on the ground. So when will we finally get relief from some of this winter weather? Let's see what's ahead with our first alert weather team. Tonight, there's still a little bit of light snow out there. It's going to come to an end, and our next chance comes late in the day on Sunday. Here's a peek outside, and what we'll do is zoom down to the Ohio River. You know, here's the meatiest part of this storm system that's coming past. Now, there's rain and a snow mixture and perhaps some icing in the mountains there, but we zoom up to the extreme north end, and this is why we were talking about snow amounts on kind of the low end today, and well, snow this morning in a lot of places has given way to kind of a break this afternoon. There's a little bit of snow now coming over the islands and over Sandusky and over toward Marblehead and Erie and Huron County picking up in some accumulations and a very light snow is going to continue through the evening. It'll be patchy heading into tonight and the chance of it should come to an end by around the midnight hour, maybe 1 or 2 a.m. Tomorrow, you'll be thankful for this. It's just going to be kind of a ho-hum winter's day. A little west breeze will pick up. It might get a little bit gusty in the afternoon, but other than that, a mostly cloudy, relatively cold winter day where the weather is just going to kind of not do much of anything. Doesn't that sound nice? And Toledo Lucas County health leaders say nearly 13% of county residents have received at least one dose of the coronavirus vaccine. Health Commissioner Eric Trzynski said 53,915 people started their vaccination process and 23,667, or just shy of 6%, have completed both phases. 145,000 people countywide are eligible to receive the vaccine and 8,000 appointments per week are being booked. The health department also made an edit to its website to make scheduling an appointment just a bit easier to find. There's now a button in the top right corner of the homepage that says schedule appointment. Easy enough, right? But as more people get their shots, Jijinski said that it's still very important to wear your masks and keep social distancing even if you are fully vaccinated. And like we already talked about, over a foot of snow fell in Toledo, but that forced many vaccine clinics to be postponed. Now, Jijinski said the health department unfortunately can't run a separate clinic for those who aren't able to reschedule, but they will try to send those folks elsewhere to get their vaccine. For the Lucas County Rec Center Clinic specifically, that's been rescheduled for this coming Monday, February 22nd. If you had an appointment, you should report at the same time, but on Monday. So for more information on postponed clinics in our area, check out the link in the description of this video. And postponed clinics weren't just in Northwest Ohio, they were seen across the state, especially as that severe weather caused shipments of the vaccine to be delayed as well. But Governor Mike DeWine said today, despite those delays, over 29,000 first doses and 28,000 second doses were delivered in the state yesterday, which is pretty good considering the circumstances. Now, vaccine eligibility did open this week to include those born with or who have early childhood conditions carried into adulthood that put them at a higher risk of developing complications from COVID-19. The governor said he heard numerous complaints that some people who do now qualify because of these conditions have actually been turned away. That is not right. Those individuals should be able to get their vaccination. Ohio Department of Health Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff reminded Ohioans today during DeWine's press conference which conditions qualify someone for vaccination under Phase 1B. You can see that list from the state on your screen right now. Now, providers should not be turning away Ohioans with these conditions, even if they are under the age of 65. And as we continue in Phase 1B, Ohio is finding new ways to keep up with vaccinating its first qualifying group, which includes those who live and work in nursing homes. So today, the state launched a new COVID-19 vaccine maintenance program, which is aimed at continuing the vaccination process as new residents and staff members enter these long-term care facilities. On a regular basis, nursing homes will be able to enroll and let the state know what their needs are. Those needs could include a mass vaccination clinic, doses for new residents and staff, people who've declined previous opportunities but have since changed their mind, and so on. And with more and more people within these homes getting their shots, DeWine said changes are on the way to how you can visit your loved ones there. So while the state does currently allow visitation, Ohio's COVID-19 health and safety protocols for nursing homes have not been revisited since July. 
DeWine said today that new statewide nursing home visitation guidance is expected to be released next Thursday, February 25th. So we will keep you updated on that when details are announced. And of course, this nerd right here has some space news for you. Check this out. A NASA rover has officially landed on Mars, accomplishing the riskiest step yet in a quest to bring back space rocks that could answer whether or not life ever existed on Mars. How exciting is that? Ground controllers at the Space Agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, teared and exchanged fist bumps when they received confirmation that the six-wheeled Perseverance had touched down on the red planet. It took a tense 11 and a half minutes for the signal to finally reach Earth. The landing marks the third visit to Mars in just over a week. Two spacecrafts from the United Arab Emirates and China swung into orbit around Mars just last week. All three missions lifted off in July to take advantage of the close alignment of Earth and Mars, traveling some 300 million miles in nearly seven months. So over the next two years, Percy, which is the rover's nickname, love that by the way, will use its seven foot arm to drill down and collect rock samples with the possible signs of bygone microscopic life. Three to four dozen chalk-sized samples will be sealed in tubes and set aside on Mars to later be retrieved by a fetch rover and brought home by another rocket ship. The goal is to get them back to Earth as early as 2031. And before I go, let's talk about baseball. The Mud Hens will be back this spring, kicking off their 19th season on April 6th. Now, fans will be allowed, but at a limited capacity. Right now, 1,500 people can be in the stands each game. And due to that limited number, the Bunheads will prioritize tickets to the following groups. First being flock members, then ticket holders with 2020 season credits and individuals that put down a deposit, and finally, the general public. Less than 200 tickets are expected to be released to the public for each home game. So, to receive an alert when single game tickets are released throughout the season, text the word baseball to one 833-585-1404. And I have more information on all of that in the description of this video. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.